Hey guys, it's Raul again, and today I'm bringing you my May wrap-up. Yeah, let's just go ahead and get started, because there's a lot of things here to talk about. Now, the first book I completed in the month of May was Fire and Ash by Jonathan Mayberry. This is the fourth and final book in the Rotten Ruin series. I buddy read this as usual with Die from Dices 19, because I've been buddy reading this book, or this series with her, uh, since we started. So, I'm just like, I was anxious for this book. But sad that it was the end of kind of like this big buddy read that we've been having and the end of this series. So yeah, I was going into this one knowing that there was going to be a lot of things going on. Uh, for those of you who um, haven't watched my videos before, haven't heard of this series, this is a post-apocalyptic zombie apocalypse type of book. So there's zombies and lots of chaos and a lot of crazy people in this world that are trying to get to our main characters. So in this book, we continue to follow the death cult that kind of emerged within book three. They continue on within book four, and the members of this death cult are still kind of behind the main characters or chasing the main characters, trying to get to them because they feel that it is their responsibility to kill everyone living on Earth. Just know I ended up giving this another 5 out of 5 stars. This is definitely probably one of my favorite YA series that I've ever read because this was just another quick, fast-paced book. If you enjoy post-apocalyptic zombie-type um, books or movies or whatever, you know, zombie-type things, definitely check out the series. It was absolutely amazing. I overall gave this series probably a 4.75 I gave five stars to three of the books in this series, and then only one of these books got like a four, 4.5. So, I mean, this was almost a perfect series for me. I just absolutely loved it. And this book was also part of the Book Buddy-a-thon. Um, I didn't do a wrap-up for the Book Buddy-a-thon because I read three books in there. I feel like I don't read that many books where I need to do multiple wrap-ups throughout the month. So, I'm just going to mention them throughout with everything else. The next book I completed in the month of May was Delirium by Lauren Oliver. This I read in audiobook. I picked it up on audiobook and it was also part of the Book Buddy-a-thon read-a-thon. This is the first book in the Delirium trilogy by Lauren Oliver. And for those of you who don't know, this is a series about, it's a uh, futuristic kind of dystopian world where love is uh, deemed a sickness. So love is, is looked at as something bad, it's a sickness that it has to get rid of or people need to get rid of it because it's apparently causing so many bad things throughout this world. People, you know, falling in love and then just chaos ensues or people believe that chaos ensues because of love. People in this futuristic uh, world, they get cured or they get kind of, their brains get manipulated so that they don't feel love anymore because they feel that if they get rid of love or they get rid of these emotions of love, people won't kind of commit these desperate acts um, of violence or whatever it may be. So this is a very different dystopian. It's not something normally that I would have picked up before, but because I read one of Lauren Oliver's books uh, a couple months ago, Vanishing Girls, and really, really enjoyed her writing, I ended up picking this one up because I really, I wanted to check out more of her writing. And I absolutely loved this one. And I ended up giving these five out of five stars. I loved the concept of you know, the whole love being outlawed. Like, it wasn't just a story about forbidden love, a guy and a girl falling in love that aren't supposed to fall in love, but it's the actual emotion. It's the falling in love itself that's outlawed and being viewed as bad. So obviously the main character in here ends up falling in love um, a couple of days before she gets cured. So she then realizes that she, she begins to doubt kind of the things that she believes in, the things that she was led to believe throughout her childhood and being raised that love um, isn't a good thing. Her mother committed suicide because of love and everything. So there's a lot of things going on um, within this one because of love and everything. This one I absolutely loved. Lauren Oliver, like I said, is just an amazing, amazing writer. So check this one out if you have not or have still not lost faith in dystopians. I would definitely check this one out because it is a great dystopian series. The next book I read was Dumplin' by Julie Murphy. Now this one is another one that I picked up on audiobook. I don't own a physical copy, I grabbed it from the library. And this one we listened to on the way to uh, BookCon a couple weeks ago in the car because it was a 10 hour drive, so we needed some audiobooks. So we listened to Dumplin' on the way there. For those of you who don't know, Dumplin' is about a story of an overweight girl who chooses to join a beauty pageant because she kind of wants to prove her mother wrong and kind of show people that um, she's different than the girls that are competing in these beauty pageants and everything. It was a cute story. I ended up giving this a three 
out of five stars. It isn't something that I normally would have picked up on my own. I picked this one up, obviously, for my wife because she likes, you know, bubbly, nice little contemporaries. And it was just a bubbly, nice little contemporary other than, you know, the, the positive message it was bringing about self-image and about um, being confident in yourself and that kind of thing. So it was really nice um, kind of seeing this girl going through her journey and falling in love. And it was just like, it, it made it seem like it was normal for her to kind of fall in love and, and find boys, which was nice. You know, I, I liked the fact that she wasn't being bullied for her weight or she felt lonely for her weight. Like she actually, there was actually a love triangle in this book and she actually had two boys that she was kind of um, falling for and having relationships with and everything, which I really enjoyed. Like I, I, I enjoy love triangles in books because I like kind of that debate between who is the main character going to stay with and that kind of stuff. So I really enjoyed it. Like I said, bubbly, nice little contemporary. So if you enjoy bubbly, you know, nice little contemporaries with a positive message, definitely check this one out. And then the next audio book that we listened to on the way back from, from Chicago was Yes, Please by Amy Poehler. This is her autobiography. And it is just, you know, about Amy Poehler's life. Amy Poehler is just hilarious. For those of you who know Amy Poehler from SNL and her movies and Parks and Recreation will definitely enjoy her autobiography, kind of her talking about how she got started and just everything throughout her life, family, friends, and just, it, it was just a wonderful, wonderful book. I gave this one a four out of five stars. Amy Poehler is just great and I feel that I know Amy Poehler a lot better now and I will appreciate kind of her movies and her TV shows and stuff a lot more after reading this and I've enjoyed Amy Poehler in the past before but this kind of made me enjoy her even more because it made her more human to me um, but I really enjoyed it Amy Poehler is just a fantastic fantastic comedian and I absolutely loved this autobiography it was a lot of fun it was hilarious at points it was just it was great heartwarming and heartfelt and she got really deep and emotional in some points it was just awesome so if you're a fan of Amy Poehler definitely give this one a try also. The next book I finished was Air of Fire by Sarah G Mass. This is the third book in the Throne of Glass series. I know a lot of people have probably read this one by now because the fourth book already came out last year but I am finally you know picking this one up. I was in a reading slump for the first half of the year so I'm finally out of my reading slump as you guys can see so I ended up picking up something bigger more fan you know more uh, high fantasy and everything so I ended up getting to this one and this one was fantastic. Like, this is definitely, everybody says it's the best book in the series, and I can see why everyone feels like it's the best book in the series. I really, really enjoyed it. It was less action-packed than book two, which is the only complaint that I had about it, but it didn't ruin my enjoyment. Like, I loved where these characters went. I loved where the story went. I loved the development um, in the, within these characters. I loved all of the new characters that were introduced and kind of their backstories. It was a little bit confusing at the beginning, kind of getting to know all of these new people and what they were about and what they were doing and kind of the stories behind them. But once everything clicks, like I got to a point where everything clicked and I understood what everyone was doing and where everybody was going and just was able to enjoy it after that. And I just loved it. Like this is multiple points of views, which I absolutely love. I love books that have multiple POVs, especially fantasies. I love them so much. So this one was one that I definitely enjoyed. I gave this one a 5 out of 5 stars because thinking about this one at the end after finishing it, I couldn't really find anything that bothered me with it. I couldn't find anything that I didn't enjoy. Like I enjoyed everything, like I said, the story arcs, the development between the characters, and everything going on in this one. This was just fantastic. And the next book I finished was also part of the Book Buddy-a-thon, and that was Landline by Rainbow Rowell. This one is about a woman who kind of is having marital problems with her husband and her husband kind of goes away with the kids for the holidays and she stays behind and then realizes that she's able to communicate with her husband in the past through the landline at her mother's house and begins to kind of have conversations with her husband in the past kind of to see where things went wrong and kind of figure out what she can do to fix her marriage and kind of fall in love again with her husband and this was just a really cute contemporary. I loved the fact that it was more adult, like these are adult characters that are in their 40s, have kids that are married, so I was able to connect with them a lot more. And Rainbow Rowell just does an amazing job at writing characters. Like these characters are no different than some of our other books. It was just, it was great. She developed them really well. 
she wrote them really well she has great writing style I didn't absolutely love it I wasn't blown away kind of by this book so I still get I gave it a four out of five stars but I still really enjoyed it Rainbow Rowell like I said is a great writer and can write really great characters so I really enjoyed this one it was pretty quick to get through so yeah definitely check this one out I mean Rainbow Rowell is just awesome. The next book I finished was A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libra Bray. This is the first book in the Gemma Doyle series and this is about a girl who after her mother's death gets sent to a boarding school um, to get kind of refined. It takes place in the 1800s and she gets taken to this boarding school to kind of become a more refined woman and kind of learn all of these womanly duties and, and to become a good skilled woman and I guess be, being a wife to then you know find a good husband and that kind of thing I really really loved this book I, this kind of to me like throughout this book as it was going on it was for me it was a little reminiscent of the craft so I kept comparing it to the craft set in the 1800s which to me is fantastic because the craft is one of my favorite movies and I've recently discovered that I really enjoy reading books set in the 1800s so this to me was just awesome like I loved Gemma Doyle is a character. She was uh, not conforming, I feel, to a lot of the things going on. Like, she wasn't okay with being kind of just, like, the basic housewife that learns these skills to please men. She was great. Like, I feel like she was really well developed. And for the time period, she was thinking, I feel, in a, a more sane way for women. She wasn't, like I said, conforming to all these things, just being okay with being told that she needed to be a certain way. So I really enjoyed Gemma Doyle as a character that way. Some of the side characters, I felt a little uncomfortable with some of the things that they were doing. It didn't really ruin the enjoyment for me. I still really enjoyed the side characters. And later on, they kind of grew on me and I really liked this group of girls. Um, so they all kind of discover, like Gemma Doyle has a magical ability where she can kind of travel to another universe and then they kind of all come together and become kind of this, this group of witches, which is why it made me reminisce of the craft because you have this group of schoolgirls that kind of discover magic and the things that they begin to do. Um, I wish I would have seen a little bit more about kind of this magic but this is the first one in the trilogy so hopefully we get to see more of that later on but I, like I said I really enjoyed the time period really loved the characters really enjoyed kind of that sense of, of magic and of mystery going on there was a you know two girls in this book that had died in a fire so they're kind of uh, trying to figure out the mystery between the death of these two girls and everything going on there some weird things going on within this alternate world and people that want to do bad things and yeah it was it was I loved it so much I gave this one a five out of five stars because even with the problematic things going on it didn't ruin the enjoyment for me like I loved reading this book and the last book that I read was a graphic novel and that was the fade out volume one by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips and this is volume one in the I guess fade out series um and this is it takes place in the 1940s it is about a kind of studio production or a movie that they're producing and the main kind of female protagonist in this movie gets killed. Like she's, find she's found dead and her murder is kind of covered up and made to seem like a suicide. And the man that found her dead, um, who is the writer of this movie, is, is just is weirded out that her death would have been kind of covered up with a suicide just to kind of get brushed off. And... He's trying to figure out kind of what happened, who might have killed her, and everything. I really enjoyed this one. I liked the art style. I liked that mystery around it because I really, really enjoy mysteries. But the I feel like a little bit toward the end, they kind of lost focus on the mystery. Kind of the focus more on the characters and kind of the backstories on all of the characters. Which is fine because there are more volumes in this. So I feel like they're going to you know, focus more on the mystery later on, but they had to develop the characters, they had to give us backstory on them so we can kind of understand them a little bit more. So, which was fine. I ended up giving this one a 3 out of 5 stars because I didn't absolutely love it, but I still really enjoyed it. Like I said, the art style was really cool. I liked the mystery around it. Um, I felt like some of the adult graphic content in there was a little bit unnecessary. Like, it didn't really add anything to the story. It didn't really make much sense, but other than that, it was a pretty cool story. I liked the characters. There were a lot of characters, so sometimes it got a little bit confusing, but they give you kind of a chart at the beginning 
that explains to you who each character is. So it's kind of a little bit easier to follow that way, but you do have to kind of keep flipping back to that chart at the beginning to kind of realize, okay, this person is this and this person is that within the production. So I really enjoyed this one, like I said, uh, three out of five stars. I'll definitely continue on because when it comes to mysteries, I definitely need to kind of see them the whole way through because I want to know who the killer is and kind of what happened and why this girl got murdered and everything. So I really enjoyed this one. If you enjoy kind of mystery graphic novels, definitely check this one out. I definitely recommend this one. After I finished wrapping up everything, I actually realized I didn't read eight things. I read nine things this month because one of them was a reread and I was going through my Goodreads chart and because rereads don't count, I forgot that I reread this one. But this was probably one of the best books that I read this month or reread this month and as The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter. I reread this book because I want to continue on with the series because everybody has been raving about The Raven King. So I wanted to give this one another shot because the first time I read it, it was a little confusing to me. I was really distracted because I was on vacation at the time in Florida and started reading this one in a hotel room with like three or four other people in the room. The TV was on. It was just really distracting. I couldn't get into it. So I, I definitely knew I wanted to reread this one. So I ended up picking this one on audiobook from the library and reading rereading it that way. And I just absolutely loved it this time around. I, I ended up changing my review on Goodreads to five out of five stars because I originally gave it a four, but I was feeling generous at the time. So it was really like a three, 3.5. Um, but I definitely changed it to five because I loved the characters this time around, kind of going into the story and really focusing on, on it a little bit better. I was able to appreciate everything. I loved the world, the characters, everything that was going on, revolving around Blue and the Raven Boys. Like I just loved it so much more. For those of you who don't know what this series is about, it's about a girl named Blue who comes from a family of psychics and the Raven Boys who are kind of looking for this mysterious um, like king. I believe the king is dead. It's like a ghostly type spirit king who can grant them a wish if they find them. So they're Raven Boys are looking for kind of like these spirit lines that they call ley lines because they want to awaken this king to grant them a wish and with Blue being a psychic she can kind of help them out to find these ley lines and stuff. So I just loved it. I loved this one. I loved rereading it. I loved the audiobook so much. Like everybody talks about this audiobook and I can see why they love it so much because the narrator is just great. I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this one the second time around. So yeah guys, that is it for all of the books that I read in the month of May. I had, like you see, a pretty great reading month. The only thing, I only gave a couple of three stars. Everything else was four and five. So I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed everything that I read. I loved that I, I started reading audiobooks too because it kind of, it makes me read more and a little bit quicker. So yeah, that's really nice that I can get through more books because of audiobooks. So yeah, comment down below. Let me know if you guys have read any of these, what your thoughts were and everything, what you guys will be reading in the month of June. Thank you all for watching. I will see you guys all next time.